Hello, my name is Michael Applebaum, Director of Solution Marketing for Linux and Appliances at Novell. Let's spend a few minutes together building your first virtual appliance. Why would you want to build a virtual appliance? If you're an independent software vendor, you might be interested in shortening your sales cycles and extending your applications to the cloud. If you're a corporate developer or administrator, you might want to seek opportunities to simplify and streamline your application packaging and deployment. In either case, SUSE Studio, the fastest and easiest way to build software and virtual appliances, can help you get there faster than you ever thought possible. Come on, let's take a look together. Welcome to SUSE Studio Online. SUSE Studio is at SUSEstudio.com. So let's go ahead and log in and get started building our first virtual appliance. I'm going to log in with my Novell ID. You can use other IDs as well. And I'm taken to the home page on my account in SUSE Studio where I can see some of the virtual appliances that I've already built or I can go ahead and create a new one right now. As I start the process I have a choice of which operating system I'd like to build my virtual appliance on. I can choose from OpenSUSE or SUSE Linux Enterprise 11, Service Pack 1 or SUSE Linux Enterprise 10. Let's go ahead and use SUSE Linux Enterprise 11 with the Just Enough Operating System configuration, or JUICE as we call it for short. I have a choice of selecting which hardware architecture I want to build this virtual appliance for. Let's go ahead and keep it simple and select 32-bit for the maximum compatibility. And as we build our virtual appliance, what we're going to do is build an Apache web server. So let's go ahead and call this Apache Appliance. So now we get started with the building of our software, our virtual appliance, and selecting all of the configuration that will go into this appliance. Right from the get-go, what we see is that we have an appliance being built on SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 11, Service Pack 1, for a 32-bit x86 platform. And because we selected the JEOS, or JUICE, configuration to begin with, we see that we have a very small configuration for this appliance as a start only 370 megabytes with a possible download size compressed of 140 megabytes. Let's go ahead and get started selecting the software that we're going to build into our virtual appliance. By default from selecting the juice configuration what we see is that 30 packages have been selected for this appliance by default from SUSE Studio. We can see those listed right here and if we're interested in learning more about a particular package we can simply clack, click on that package name. It shows which software repository the particular package is from, the version number of that package, the size of it, what license applies to it, as well as a brief description of that package. And at the top of the page we can see the various software sources or repositories that we can select from which to build software into our appliance. By default, we have four repositories here. The SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 11, Service Pack 1 repository and its updates, as well as the software development kit for SUSE Linux Enterprise 11, Service Pack 1 and its updates. If we're interested in adding more software repositories, we can browse the available set of software sources. For example, as we're building our virtual appliance, we might be interested in adding the VMware ESX tools for SUSE Linux Enterprise, and we can simply do that with a click here on the Add button, or we can remove that to maintain the slimmest possible configuration. And very quickly, using the graphical user interface, just return to that main software selection screen. If we were to add repositories, we'd see a broader set of packages available as options, uh, but even as default, from the software repositories that we have here, we see a possible set of over 4,500 packages available to us for selection and inclusion within our appliance. What you also see is that although only 30 packages have been actually selected for use in this virtual appliance, there are a total of over 150 packages that are currently planned to be built into it. And that's because of the powerful dependency resolution that's included in SUSE Studio, where if you select a particular package, it will pull in all of the other 
packages that are prerequisites and dependencies for the package you selected. So we're interested in building an Apache web server. Let's go ahead and look for the Apache software in the software repositories that we've selected. I see a list of possible packages matching Apache. And here I find the particular package that I'm interested in adding into my appliance to build this Apache web server. If I want to get information about it, I can simply click on that, learn a little bit more about the version, about which software repository it comes from, the license that applies to it, and so on. I'm going to go ahead and select Apache 2 and add that into my appliance. What we see is that we now have 31 packages selected and a total of 161 packages that will be built into the virtual appliance. And SUSE Studio is kind enough to tell me that I just added five packages totaling about three megabytes into my virtual appliance. If I want to see the details of the other four packages that were pulled in automatically through the intelligent dependency resolution algorithm, I can simply click on that link and immediately see what are those packages. At the same time, if there's a particular package that I want to specifically exclude from my virtual appliance, I can simply click on the link that says ban and that package will be excluded. Of course, if I do that, I may have an error that would prevent me from actually running Apache properly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply undo that action that I took to ban that particular package. And so that package will be properly added into my Apache virtual appliance. If we go back and take a look at for example, the server functionality, the server set of packages. What I'm going to see here is now for the first time, I have certain packages that have a light gray check, uh, check mark, and those indicate packages that have been pulled in as a result of the dependency resolution process going on behind the scenes from the packages that I have actively selected. So I selected the software that's going to go into my appliance. Let's go ahead and configure that virtual appliance. As I go into the configuration part of SUSE Studio, I have a number of tabs. Right off the bat, I can select the default locale and language, as well as the time zone. I'm going to select USA Eastern. And I have a choice of how I'd like to configure the networking for my appliance. By default, I can leave it as DHCP. I can choose to manually configure my network, enter the host name and the IP address, and so on. I can go back and have the appliance perform network configuration during the first boot. I can simply not configure networking, but right now let's leave it at DHCP for simplicity. I can also choose to enable the built-in firewall that's available and select some of the options associated with that firewall. And SUSE Studio is intelligent enough to tell me you've selected the firewall to be enabled, but you haven't actually installed the firewall package into your appliance. And it conveniently gives me a link if I want to add that firewall right in from that screen without having to go back into the software selection tab. Now I'd like to keep my appliance as slim, as streamlined as possible and create the smallest build. So for right now, we're going to disable the firewall and leave that out. On this screen, I can also specify and select users that I would like to pre-populate into my system. In this case, we always have root as the uh, root account, and I can add tux, the symbol of Linux, as another user, and I can specify the passwords and the groups that those users would belong to. Let's go in and actually have a little fun now and personalize our first virtual appliance. I can choose what kind of logo I want to use in some of my screens and my wallpapers. So if I want to select right now, we have the SUSE Gecko. I might want to use the Linux Penguin, or I can certainly upload my own logo. On the background, I can also select from a variety of default wallpapers and designs, or I can upload my own new background. Let's go into some of the startup options for this appliance. By default, we're set at a run level of three, or a console startup. If this is going to be more of an end-user desktop appliance, I would probably select Run Level 5, or I have other options as well, but let's keep it at Run Level 3 since this is going to be a typical server deployment. 
I can also choose to add an end user license agreement. So if I'm a commercial independent software vendor and I want to distribute my application via an appliance, I can enforce the presentation of an end user license agreement right when the appliance boots up for the first time and the user must review and accept that license agreement before they're able to proceed with actually booting up the appliance. In the server tab I have a couple of options to set up databases and configure those databases both MySQL and PostgreSQL. You can choose to upload the appropriate MySQL files and here SUSE Studio is telling me that although I'm choosing to set up MySQL, I haven't actually installed the appropriate packages into my appliance. So again, it's alerting me with some intelligent reporting there. Let's go ahead and disable that. I'm not going to go ahead and add a database into my appliance at this point. If I were building a desktop appliance, I could also have options for selecting if we want to have a user automatically log into this appliance. For example, perhaps I'm running an appliance uh, system as a kiosk and I want to have uh, people be able to self-service themselves and I want to have a particular user account automatically log in when that appliance boots up and maybe I want to automatically launch a web browser so I could set, specify that here under the auto start desktop programs. Now let's jump ahead for a moment and take a look at some of the build options for this appliance. And this is where a lot of the real power comes in as we think about the flexibility of building this software stack for a variety of different physical, virtual, and cloud platforms. So we have a universal application stack builder or appliance builder that you can use to create appliances for a live CD or DVD, a hard disk image or a USB stick, and this option for the hard disk image also allows you to specify uh, to be used as a KVM guest. So it's actually the same format that you would use for both the hard disk image and the KVM guest. You can certainly select VMware or VirtualBox which use the same virtual machine format. Or you can choose to configure your virtual appliance as a Zen guest. In the future we'll also be having support for Hyper-V. So right now let's go ahead and select that we want to build a VMware virtual machine. If I want I can also specify to build additional machine formats at the same time and it would simply build multiple versions of my appliance simultaneously. Now let's go back for a moment to the configuration tab and look at the appliance options here. And this is where I can specify the configuration of my VMware or Zen virtual machine. I can choose how much memory to give, how much virtual memory to give the appliance, what disk size to allocate, and other options here including the use of Logical Volume Manager, or LVM. I can also choose to create an appliance which will be a Zen host to use the appliance as a virtual host platform, not only as a virtual guest to run on another hypervisor layer. Finally, I have the option of creating scripts that will run either at the end of the build process for the appliance, which would just happen once when that appliance is built, or I can add a script that will run whenever the finished appliance boots. I can use either or both of these. I can also choose to add specific files into my appliance that aren't necessarily RPM packages but can simply be tarball archives or other single files. If I have a particular configuration file that I want to include I would simply drop that in here and that will be included into the appliance when it's built. So let's go ahead and move forward and build our appliance for the first time. I can specify again the version number, which formats I want to build this appliance for. I've selected VMware, so let's go ahead and get building. One of the powerful capabilities of SUSE Studio is also the ability to work on multiple appliances simultaneously and really multitask while you may have one appliance building in the background. To, the, to go to my home page, look at some of the other appliances that I may have in progress or that I've already built and actually take a look at those and work on those at the same time. So I can go in here 
I can perform some additional software work or configuration on another appliance that I previously created or I may have in progress and have full ability to work on multiple appliances at the same time. In effect, my home page serves as an appliance switcher similar to an application switcher in a desktop com computing environment. So let's go back to my Apache appliance. And at the end of the appliance build process, what you see SUSE Studio doing is actually checking the supportability of this appliance that we're creating. It has a, port a, a powerful supportability assessment module that intelligently checks all of the packages and files that are going into this appliance to determine if it will be fully supportable by Novell for production usage. So you're not only building something that will be merely interesting, but something that is fully suitable for production deployment within an organization and fully supportable from an enterprise operating standpoint by Novell. And now we have our completed virtual appliance. We can see what the final size of this is. The appliance itself uses 380 megabytes. We've chosen to configure it for a virtual disk size of 16 gigabytes. We can see the number of packages that we put in here. And now we have the option if we want to go ahead and download this virtual appliance and then go ahead and, and run it on our own uh, VMware platform within our organization or without having to download and test it ourselves we can test drive it right from within SUSE Studio by clicking on the test drive button. This literally spins up a virtual appliance within the SUSE Studio environment and boots up our appliance for easy and fast testing and easy revision if there are any adjustments that we want to make to our appliance before we complete it and download it. So we're literally booting up our Apache appliance in a test environment on the SUSE Studio server. So this saves you significant time from downloading that, installing that, and running it on your own server within your own environment. Let's go ahead and log in as root. And now we are in our own Apache appliance, and that thing is running. It can be tested, it can be uh, adjusted. And some nice features as well that we can take a look at as we're running our appliance and testing it. We can also take a look at what files and packages may have changed within our appliance environment while we ran it. So if we want to make some adjustments to files or configurations as we're in the test drive mode, we can do so. And then we can even use any adjustments that we've made to our appliance from running it in test drive and have those changes applied into the appliance definition, the appliance build, in real time. So if there's a particular change to, as an example, resolve.conf, First of all, I can see what those changes are, but I can also add that updated version of that file right into my appliance and in real time adjust my appliance without having to manually perform, uh, understand and then uh, perform the, the configuration changes that I may have made as I was testing this in test drive. So I've made those changes. I can go back to test drive and then I can go back to SUSE Studio, rebuild that if I want to based on any changes I've made, and just like that, in a matter of a few minutes and a few clicks, we've worked together and built our own virtual appliance. I'd encourage you to take a look at SUSEstudio.com, understand how it can help you get up to speed very quickly with building your own virtual appliances for the first time, to streamline application deployment, application development and packaging, and understand what this can mean for your own environment. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you in the SUSE Studio community.